What's up guys, it's Chachi Power here with Rocket Punch Army. I'm going to start off in uh, my living room because it's a big box, but I do want to show you this before I get into the room to actually do the review. So today we have the Takara Tomy uh, DMZ06. This is a Votam Scope Dog uh, figure. Um, now, a lot of you might be familiar with the DMZ06, but this is a special one. This is the Melkia color, uh, which is a nice purplish, pinkish hue. Uh, normally, I would reserve those for my wife's collection, which I have set up in the display there. But the price was right. I made an offer. The guy accepted. I can't pass up these highly detailed, awesome figures for such a good price. So, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and check it out. This is, an, this is an exclusive for Hobby Market, so it doesn't have the nice artwork boxes that the uh, regular releases do. It does, however, have this uh, blue box, all right? And they come in shipping boxes to protect them. Um, now, the only thing with these boxes, uh, because it is an exclusive, they don't make up uh, the nice ones with full color, so they just put them in these since they're a limited run. Uh, and they're really flimsy, like this box is just falling apart. If you take a look back here, you'll see the DMZ06, and you'll see there it says Toy and Hobby Market, showing off its, its exclusivity. Um, oh, see, that's what I'm talking about. Box is completely falling apart. <laughs> so, that's pretty worthless. And here is the figure itself. Like I said, it's a, it's a purple violet color. And since my daughter's name is Violet, I figured I'd get it. And it's a freaking scope dog. And here is the backpack with the boosters. And it's got a little Microman figure here with different, I mean, an assortment of hands, gloved and ungloved, and an articulated hand down here. But uh, without showing you too much, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, go to the review area and check it out. All right, so here's a figure in my little area here, a little easier to review this way. And look at it, it's just absolutely stunning. But um, before I actually get into the review, and for those of you that don't care about the history of this, you might want to forward it a little bit. But uh, I, I just have to tell you a little bit about these. Um, now this is from the show of uh, Votoms, Armored Trooper Votoms. The mech designs are from Kunio Okawara, which uh, if you guys uh, know the name, it's also the guy responsible for Gundam. Now he's obviously into a lot of the the whole real robot stuff, even though he did work on a lot of super robot stuff like uh, Daitarn, uh, Dioja, a bunch of other stuff, just wiki it. Um, it's insane the amount of stuff he's worked on. So this they tried to make as real as possible. Like As a matter of fact, one of the cool things that I did like about it, not only did they make it uh, realistic in the fact that there's somebody that pilots this inside and it's relatively small compared to like the robots we're normally used to but it uses uh, something uh, to simulate movement of humans like smooth fluid movements because normally robots you know uh, uh, uh. so this um, in the future they came up with a new thing where they were able to move fluidly and I'll explain how that works in just a moment so basically they run on batteries so picture these having to be real in real life uh, they're heavy uh, very difficult to maneuver you know however you would picture a really heavy robot uh, to be in real life and the batteries what they would do is uh, they energized a liquid that would run through um, the actual mech uh, in its muscle cylinders they were called all right now the muscle cylinder is what I'm talking about to emulate human motion. It, the liquid's called polymer ringer solution. All right, so check it out. Not only is it highly flammable, making it you know uh, tough to work with, but it also breaks down over time. Now liquid in these didn't last long at all, so uh, they had to keep replacing it. A lot of maintenance, which made these especially difficult. So just picture that in real life. A lot of maintenance on these, uh, dangerous and overall not the same not what we've come to expect from robots when we watch cartoons there's robots that are millions of yards up in in tallness and they're running around like they weigh nothing no th these robots actually uh, had heft and there was a danger to them now this model here is the ATM 09 ST all right which is pretty much the basic the scope dog uh, in Milkia color which I think is part of the Milkian Federation I haven't watched the whole thing but uh, this is a special color, which is why it's a uh, limited release. This would weigh in real life more than six metric tons, 
which is crazy. Uh, the armor on this is anywhere between 6 millimeters, 14 millimeters of an unknown material. And one of the cool things is, uh, you know, obviously this would be a really clumsy walking. So they did have gliding wheels on the bottom. And you'll see here, it's got the little wheels, all right? So the wheels are not just for the toy, but it would be for the real uh, mech where they can slide along the ground. Uh, they, sh they usually reach around 82 kilometers an hour, maybe less when they're fully armored. Um, and to stop, there was actually these spikes here that come out and just dig right into the ground to keep them from <laughs> continuing to roll with all their weight. Now you may not be familiar with the uh, color we're seeing here. Uh, you may be more familiar with this color. This is the standard ATM09ST, uh, the standard colors. This is also a DMZ uh, from Takara. This is the regular one. This is uh, the second one I've, I've bought from my collection. But you'll see they share the same mold, just different colors. This one here, however, it seems a little more battle-worn, has a lot more, uh, you know, faction decals or whatever they are. Now, if all the pre-painted weathering and panel lining is not enough for you guys, uh, it does also have a bunch of uh, stickers here uh, that you can apply to the figure, give them a lot more details instead of having just the plain look of the figure. And here's a scope dog next to a strike dog. You'll see the scope dog is a little bit smaller than the strike dog, and the strike dog was the first one I got from this series. I wish I could get all of them because they're so awesome but uh, they are a bit pricey. Now, uh, as far as scale, the, um, the DMZ line is 118 scale, and just for comparison, I have a Yamato, a 112 scale, right here, which doesn't even fit in the freaking uh, screen here. So you can get a size difference there. Let me just scroll up so you can see how much farther the Yamato one goes, all right? So, and uh, lastly, for poops and giggles, here he is next to a 124 scale scope dog. Although the scale does seem a little bit off, this doesn't look like a 124 scale figure, but that's what the box says, 124 scale. Oh man, how can I forget guys? Uh, I know a lot of you aren't familiar with these uh, robots. Uh, for you Transformers collectors, here's what it scales up to uh, with a masterpiece streak. So besides looking pretty in pink, what does this do? You guys are probably wondering, is it just a statue? What does it do? Actually, it's a lot better than you would think just by looking at it. All right, you got little details like these little shoulder covers here. You got these little things where they hang them from uh, airships, like to be able to uh, drop them off anywhere. Uh, they're actually articulated. All right, and then they have swivels, ratchets. You got the fists here on a ball joint. You have a waist. All right, you get these flaps that come up to make way for the leg section to come up. You also have knees, which have very nice ratchets. Uh, you have the ankle here and the foot. And also some slight movement at the toes here. You have the actual scope here. Uh, this little uh, scope here actually connects to the pilot's visors or goggles, whatever they wear. All right, and they spin around this way, depending on what it is they need to use. The antennas don't do anything, but this does flip up, allowing you to see the pilot inside. Speaking of the pilot inside, uh, he's actually not inside at the moment. This also comes off, by the way, to reveal the pilot itself. But check this out. This comes up and opens, and you have a fully detailed interior. Check out the detail on that interior, guys. The seats actually look like leather. Everything's detailed. The metal pipes, there's weathering all over the place. Spin them around this way. This moves, all right, and it's got actual cables that come out the back here. Uh, it's just amazing, amazing the amount of detail that goes into this. Then coming over to the front here, if we lift up this hatch, it reveals the foot pedals right inside for the pilot. Now speaking of the pilot, we're going to check them out. Now here's the pilot here, the figure. I think this is just supposed to be a generic uh, pilot figure. Uh, I might be mistaken, but I believe it is. And uh, you'll notice it's actually a Microman figure. It even says so on the base. Now, if you don't know what Microman are, uh, you might know uh, the whole Diaclone series and Microman, those clear figures with the chrome heads. Uh, this is based off that, so it's got a little um, history there for you uh, Transformer guys. Uh, and obviously this is coming from Takara also. Um, now, like all uh, Microman figures, uh, there's tons of articulation. These are some of the most articulated figures, and they have been for a very long time. Um, very G.I. Joe-ish here on the bottom, except without the, oops, uh, and everything does uh, peg into ball joints, which is why it has a lot of articulation. Very G.I. Joe looking here, except there's no springs, got ball joints, got uh, 
double jointed knees very very cool um, don't know why I never picked up on Microman figures before but uh, it does have an array of alternate hands check this out and all the hands are articulated look at that they all have uh, little pivots on each hand not only does it come with these hands it also comes with these these are the gloved hands so you get a, an assortment of, of accessories with this set now while we're on the subject of accessories before we head back uh, to look at the pilot figure in the mech uh, here is the gun for the mech right, it's a nice it's a nice piece nicely painted got some panel lining detail there uh, very nice this does move back and forth you notice some more weathering over here uh, and also comes with these hands for the mech itself which are fully articulated hands you see there's joints on every possible part of the hand just like a real human hand even the thumb and of course like all other robots especially Takara ones there are fingers that fall off all right but it is cool that they included this articulated hand and they also have the weapon holding hand which for some strange reason you have to pop off a tree here so a lot of people that like to keep their stuff in boxes and or rebox it and then resell later on uh, might not want to take this off I'm not going to take it out I don't display my robots with weapons due to lack of space so for now this is going to stay the way it is now getting back to the pilot feature I do have the pilot right here I'm going to go ahead and pose him uh, in a manner that will allow him to sit in the cockpit it's a little bit tricky guys uh, I can never really get him in there properly it's a lot of adjusting and moving and opening this thing in the front here to get the feet down where they're supposed to be. But you will eventually get it. There you go, his feet right on the pedal. Make sure he's sitting down as far as possible. You can actually put his uh, hands on the uh, controllers here. And check this out. forgot to show you this. The little controller levers actually do move. Uh, I'm not going to bother getting his hands on there perfect, but you guys get the idea. Then you can close this top part and then attach the mech head there you go now the uh, final piece I wanted to show you before we end this uh, long review is uh, right back here you'll see there's two hooks there and that is to attach this incredibly huge backpack you'll see it's got boosters there I'm assuming some type of flight kit because these uh, do not fly on their own I'm not exactly sure what the backpack is called I know every attachment has its own name uh, but I don't know it so what I'm going to do is just hook it up right here in the back. Make sure I got it facing the right way. Alright, so it attaches like that. And it's just such a presence. I can only imagine what this would look like in 112 scale. And they do have a 112 scale version of that backpack. And uh, they actually have a 112 version of uh, this color. And uh, I did want to show you guys the die cast uh, parts of the robot. Uh, as far as I can tell, the only die cast that's visible is this bar here that goes into these joints at the bottom is die cast. And the reason it has this type of joint here with the die cast is because there's a, a mode. Um, you're obviously not going to climb into this if you're a pilot. You're not going to jump from the ground up. You can do that in the Super Robot uh, cartoons, but this is a real mech, remember. So people need a way to get in easily. I'm going to show you how that works. Now, I had to do this off camera because it is a little... Uh, it's a little weird because you know you guys know I hate scratching the paint and the paint on this is matte. But basically the legs fold back, the feet fold up this way. I'll try it with this one, all right, just like that. Then it gets to this position which would allow the pilot a lot easier access or much easier access uh, to get into the mech. So instead of jumping 12 feet into the air, you can just grab onto whatever it is thing he grabs onto and just get right in. Alright guys, so that brings us to the end. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little drawn out. There was a lot to say about this figure. And as usual, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And hopefully Google Plus does not mess up my ability to reply to you. And until uh, next time guys, bye bye.